This is Tim Bryan reporting from Volcano. Today, global attention focused on the Mauna Loa Observatory during Al Gore's Climate Reality Project, 24 Hours of Reality. Mauna Loa is the world's largest volcano and a ground zero of sorts for mankind's understanding of climate change. That's because the huge mountain is the home to the Mauna Loa Observatory. Established in 1957, the facility has become the premier long-term atmospheric monitoring facility on Earth. That's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. For this reason, the Mauna Loa Observatory Operation Office in Hilo was the featured location in Al Gore's Climate Reality Project 24 Hours of Reality. For more on Wednesday's event, here's Stephanie Salazar. There were a few signs of activity after hours at the Kilauea Financial Center in Hilo on Wednesday night. Outside, a satellite truck was parked at the ready, and inside, a small crowd gathered in the NOAA Mauna Loa Observatory office, activity in a building that is normally empty at this hour. 7 o'clock is actually going to be the 7 o'clock, okay. 7 o'clock, 7 of 5 is Lieutenant Governor. A cast of different environmental and academic institutions and organizations were preparing for a global video cast. Uh, Mr. Kaka will give you a cue uh, probably about a minute after 7. Part of the Climate Reality Project, founded and chaired by Al Gore, Nobel laureate and former Vice President of the United States. And will continue to travel to all 24 time zones. But most importantly, will remove the doubt that the climate crisis is happening now and happening faster than we think. The 24-hour event made stops in time zones from all over the earth and Hilo was the spot for hour number six. The video cast began with an Oli by Kahu Danny Akaka Jr. and a welcome by Lieutenant Governor Brian Schatz. We have a proud history in Hawaii of science related to global climate change. And I'm speaking here from the NOAA headquarters. This is not a NOAA sponsored or organized event, but I'm here at the NOAA headquarters for the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hilo. 35 miles from here at 11,000 feet above sea level, a small lab constantly samples the air to measure the composition of carbon dioxide, what we know as the primary human-induced contributor to global climate change. This lab is the premier atmospheric research facility that has been collecting data related to change in the climate for over half a century. The upward trend in carbon dioxide is sometimes referred to the, as the Keeling curve, named after Charles David Keeling, the first person to make frequent, regular measurements of carbon dioxide, taking readings first at the South Pole and then right here in Hawaii from 1958 and onward. Hawaii hopes to continue this leadership in science so we can better understand human-induced climate change. Climate change will profoundly impact island communities such as Hawaii. And when the featured speaker, Maxine Burkett, took the stage, a grim vision of climate change effects took shape on the projected presentation by her side. There may be an earth where deeper and longer droughts are not killing crops, animals, and people. There may be an earth where the fires are not spreading wildly, burning hotter and longer. There may be an earth where the winds and the storms are not getting more destructive. Burkett, an associate professor of law and director of the Center for Island Climate Adaptation and Policy at the University of Hawaii, presented evidence that the impact of climate change is here and now. We have to live in the world of reality. Burkett spoke to Big Island Video News before making her global presentation. Well, tonight I'm talking about the reality of climate change. I'm making a link between the extreme weather events that we've seen all over the world, from the flood in Pakistan, floods in Pakistan to the, uh, the extreme fires in, in Russia to the extreme weather that we saw this summer uh, in the mainland United States, making that link with what we know about the science of climate change, what's been forecasted and what's happening right now that shows us and demonstrates clearly that climate change is happening now. However, despite the mounting evidence, Evidence and data, like the information presented by Burkett, a passionate opposition to acknowledging climate change has established itself. I think the conversation has been hijacked somewhat by the, the, the denials about what is happening in reality with climate change. And this is absolutely an attempt to 
get the conversation back to action and, and really end this uncertainty about whether or not it's happening because it's uncontroversial in the scientific, scientific community. While it's difficult to separate the debate from political interests. So let me just break it down. Carbon, carbon dioxide is basically this. <sighs> Look how much pollution I just put out. Burkett addressed some of the common rebuttals to climate change, like the record snowfalls that fell in some parts of the country and even in Hawaii, where the summit of Mauna Kea was covered in snow just this year, in June. I don't know if it has to do with the world climate change or what, but I don't know, it's sort of cool, it's in June. That absolutely plays into it. In fact, snowstorms, just because it's snow and because it's cold doesn't mean that that's not a signal of climate change. In fact, the more, more snowstorms we see is a more of a signal because there's more moisture in the air. Warmer air traps more water, more water vapor. And as a result of that, we're seeing bigger snowstorms and bigger rainstorms during the summer and the spring. Um, and we're also seeing greater droughts. It's kind of one of those funny things about the, the changing climate. We're going to see more extremes in both directions. In Wrapping up her presentation, Burkett encouraged everyone to speak up in the face of continued denial. First, speak up about climate change with everyone you know. Do not let denial go unchallenged. Don't let the deniers control the argument. Use every tool that you have. Talk about the reality of climate change on Facebook or Twitter. Use the reality hashtag when you use social media. Comment on news articles and TV programs, especially, especially when they misstate or ignore the impacts of climate change. Join the Climate Reality Project at www.climaterealityproject.org. Wherever you live, there are ways that you can get involved and help make a difference. Make a difference here in our community, in our state, by joining the Blue Planet Foundation to help solve the climate crisis. And make commitments with the organizations like Kanu Hawaii. Deepen your commitment. Make consumers choices that reduce energy use and reduce your impact on the environment. But above all, do not give up. Tell our national leaders to help solve the climate crisis. Tell our politicians that we are paying very close attention to what they say and what they do, that we absolutely do care about our future, and if we speak up forcefully enough, our leaders will have no choice but to respond.